Hey student, so pie charts are very useful when representing parts of a whole. It'll be useful in science class or in finance class or in anything else that you need to represent parts of a whole. I'm going to use the relative amount of elements in the Earth's crust as an example of how to make a pie chart. Notice that I already entered in the data. If you want a hint of how to enter in the data quickly, just press enter and it'll go down the column as you enter things or press tab and the data that you enter will go across the row. So that's an easy way of um, entering data. Since I've already done that, um, you don't need a tutorial on that anyway. I'm going to show you how to make it look professional. So you're going to add borders. So you can add uh, choose all borders like that. And notice how some elements are cut off. So wait till your cursor changes into this symbol and then move it over and you can change the headings. Okay. Uh, if you forget to put in headings, you can click on the row number and it highlights the entire row. Then you click on this thing way in the corner up here and it says insert and you can insert that entire row. Uh, you could also insert a column by clicking here and also pressing insert as well. But I want to uh, write the element and the percentage. of its abundance. So I'll put that in there, highlight that again, and I will also want to include that as uh, my, uh, include it in the borders, make it bold, make it a little larger so that we know that it is the heading and I can even make it look, give it a nice touch by shading it a different color. Now we can really see this uh, this table on the right. Now I want to make a graph out of this table so highlight it and insert the pie graph. So here's a pie graph. The 2D one is the one that I want to show and boom there it is. It looks very nice. Okay, uh, I know I'm not going to have a colored printer so no way I'm going to be able to show all these different colors so I need to represent it differently. So right click on it and you will be able to add data labels. So click on adding data labels and look, wow, it adds the label of the percentage, but that's not enough. I also wanted to show the type of element. So uh, click on right click again and format the data labels. Here it'll tell me the label options. It's showing the value right now. Uh, I want to be able to show the category name as well. Okay, so the category name is, for example, oxygen, silicon, or aluminum. Uh, let's see what that looks like. You're going to have to experiment and that looks very nice. So I'm going to use that. There's a comma here which you can get rid of if you want to. So I clicked on the wrong number uh, thing. So you, you got to make sure to click on the uh, label. That's what you want. So click on that and uh, format the label and change that to maybe I just wanted to have a space instead of a comma. So boom, there is my comma space. Okay, um, now it's not necessary to have this legend here. So I can delete the legend and uh, it's showing these these things here are called leader lines. I can either get rid of them or I can uh, make or I can move this around because look how it's not really um, showing my data as I would like it to. It's a little messy up here. So what I can do is right click on this and you can experiment with this if you want to. This is optional. But format the data series. Here it shows the series angle of the first slice. The first slice here is oxygen. Okay. So perhaps I would like it to uh, rotate here. Right now it's at zero degrees. Think of this as a face of a compass and it'll go all the way around to 360. So maybe about 100 would be nice that way. Everything is right here. Very nice. Okay. So um, I can see this data is a lot easier to read than how I had it earlier. Uh, then I can now change this title. Percentage is not very descriptive. It's the default because it is the column heading right here. But I want to change it to say um, relative amount of elements in the Earth's crust. So double click on here and then I'll have the text. So I can just control select all, oh, sorry, just or control copy. And then I can um, put, put my title here. So 
I'm going to look at layout and make a chart title uh, uh, above the chart and uh, press paste and that is my chart title which is very nice I will have to um, put my name I would have to also make this a large title so I'm gonna make it about this large make sure to merge and center it and then it is in the center uh, click this here to make it vertically in the center and this to make it uh, in the uh, horizontally in the center and click bold and make it larger there it looks very nice like a beautiful title doesn't it now uh, make sure to put name here date and period make sure to do that before it gets printed otherwise they're getting mixed up with all the other students printing from the same printer and then I can now double check to make sure it's fitting all in one page. So we'll press view here and make it into a page break preview. It's not uh, viewing correctly. I can see that my chart is going to be off. So I would probably want to change this to make it into a portrait view. So if I say uh, print, it's going to, oh, sorry, maybe make it into a landscape view. So now the landscape view is there. And then we can go back to this page, and now we can see that um, everything is in is um, fitting on the page very nicely. Make sure to not click on the chart. If you click on the chart and then press print, print it'll only print the chart. So you got to click off of it somewhere like that, and then press file and and uh, print and. Booyah, kasha! You're gonna get an awesome printout. It's gonna look professional and. It's going to earn you your A probably, or if this is you know for work uh, in the future, you'll get your get good graces from your boss, and then you'll make a lot of money. Learning how to do pie charts is a valuable skill. It's going to get you far. It's going to add that professional touch so that you can present data quickly and easily for your readers. Awesome.